Hello, everyone, and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care Podcast. This is podcast number three, and I want to invite everyone to subscribe to my podcast. That way you won't miss anything. Now, today's podcast is about RV manners and etiquette while we are camping. This is going to be especially good for some of you newer RVers. You know, you don't really have a lot of experience with it. Well, you're going to learn a lot about the things that you can do to make camping more enjoyable for yourself and for others. And the truth is that most RVers do practice good manners, especially long-time or experienced RVers. However, I will say this, even experienced RVers like myself still need to be reminded about the effect that we can have on others by our actions when we're camping. So we're going to cover a lot of points today, things that we should keep in mind while we're camping to make sure we're showing good manners to others. And we're going to start first with campgrounds, because campgrounds, that's where a lot of the issues kind of come in by RVers being really close to one another, a lot of people in a small area. Well, then manners and etiquette really show up when they're not being shown. So let's go ahead and get started on good manners in campgrounds, and afterward we'll talk about boondocking. The first point of etiquette for campgrounds is that when you come to a campground uh, and you're checking in, usually they're going to give you a list of guidelines and rules for that campground. And you know, a lot of folks will take that list and just sort of uh, put it aside. They intend to get to it, but they never do. Well, my encouragement is read the campground rules. There's a reason they're given out. And the truth is that with each campground, things can be a little bit different. And a lot of times, the things you really need to know are in those rules. So be sure to read the rules for each campground that you go to. Now, we're going to get started on a section here that I'm going to call the noise section, because that's one of the biggest irritations that folks have about campgrounds and being near to other RVers. So our next point of etiquette is no loud music. And this is a big one with me. You know, it's really amazing how many people love to play their music, but kind of don't realize that not everybody wants to listen to the artist they want to listen to, or even the kind of music they want to listen to. And so uh, a lot of times they'll outside turn that music up and everyone around them is hearing their music. Well, you know, here's the thing. Music is a very subjective thing. And from one person to the next, it's very different as far as what they want to listen to. So if you force your music on someone else, they're usually not going to be very happy about that. Here's my recommendation. If you're going to play your music outside, while you're outside, then go to the edge of your site. If you can hear your music out at the edge and beyond of your site, it needs to be turned down. And if you really don't want to bother anybody, well, then wear headphones outside. But the point is, make sure that your music is not being played so loud that it's going to affect others and really cause them to not feel enjoyment of their camping experience. So that's number one. Be careful with loud music. Number two, observe quiet hours. You know, almost every campground says that you need to be kind of dialing everything back on the noise level by 10 o'clock. And that's a good rule of thumb to follow. Usually around there, people are starting to get ready for bed. But if you aren't careful, you'll be out there at that campfire sitting around it and you're having a good time with your friends and the... Uh, 10 o'clock curfew kind of comes and goes, and the next thing you know, 
you're still just having a great time laughing and telling jokes and enjoying one another's company. And maybe one of you in the group has a really loud voice to begin with. And now your neighbors are getting upset because they want to go to bed. So be careful. Observe the quiet hours in a campground. You know, it doesn't mean that you can't be out there late at night around the campfire. That's certainly a great thing. But just be careful about the noise level. After 10 o'clock, make sure that you dial it down so that it's not going to create a problem for others. Now, the next point of etiquette about noise is never use a construction generator in a campground. Uh, these things are just too loud. Yes, I know they're much cheaper than inverter generators, but they really are loud and obnoxious, especially when folks right next door are trying to enjoy their camping experience. So if you need a generator for any reason, make sure that it's an inverter generator and make sure you use it sparingly. You know, the truth is that you really don't need a generator all the time. Mostly you just need to power up and charge up your batteries, maybe uh, it, for a short time in the morning and then a short time in the evening to get you through the night. Otherwise, the generator really should sit quiet unless you're going to use it for a really high electricity uh, component like maybe your microwave or a hairdryer or something like that. And really it should only be on for a short time then. So. Make sure you're careful about your generator noise and never use a construction generator. Now, the next etiquette point on noise is don't leave dogs unattended when you're away from your campsite. This can be an issue because when the owners are there, the dog knows his owner is there, very often they're happy, they're content, and they can be more quiet. But when the owner leaves, sometimes the dog gets very nervous. They're in a place that they're not used to and all these other people around. Before you know it, they're barking because they're nervous, maybe even whining or howling. And this could go on for hours while you're away from the campsite. In the meantime, really bothering your fellow campers. So don't leave dogs unattended when you're away from the campsite. The next point, now we're going to move into more about dogs, and that's keep your dogs on a leash. A lot of uh, dog owners at home, they may allow their dog to roam pretty freely, and there's no problem with that. However, when you're in a campground, that's a space where you've got a lot of people and dogs really kind of crammed in next to one another. And before you know it, there can be personality differences with these dogs. And if you aren't carefully controlling your dog, they may get into an altercation with other dogs, especially if they don't have a leash. So if everybody keeps their dog on a leash and keeps them under control, we can avoid a lot of problems and a lot of issues that way. Our next point of etiquette is pick up after your dogs and don't leave poop bags behind for others. We shouldn't have to say this really, but unfortunately we do. There are some that they carry their dogs along, they take them out to take care of their business, and unfortunately, they leave their poop behind without cleaning it up. Or even more egregious is they will, you know, pick it up with a bag, but they leave the bag there. Uh, please don't do that. That is not good manners. It is not good etiquette. No one wants to clean up behind your dog. Now, our next point of etiquette with regard to dogs is if the dog is a barker, and you know what I mean, if anybody walks by or maybe a dog uh, starts barking in the distance, they just automatically respond and start barking, and they're just a regular barker. 
Well, at home, it might be fine. Maybe you live in an area where that doesn't bother anybody. But if you know your dog is a barker and it's just the way they are, well, then maybe it might be a good idea to leave them with a sitter when you go RV camping. And that way you don't bring along the dog that's going to irritate everybody around you. Okay, let's move away from dogs now. Let's talk about the next point of etiquette, and that is don't leave any trash behind for the next camper. And I've seen this. You know, you pull into a campsite, and the people that were there before you, apparently something broke or it, they don't want it anymore, and they just left it there rather than throwing it away. Or maybe they took the trash and put it in the campfire ring. Well, these are not good things to do. Don't leave trash for the next camper. That's a really important point of etiquette. And the next one is if you have kids, make sure that they're well supervised and that they're respectful to others. Unfortunately, sometimes parents uh, go camping and they're relaxing and the kids want to go somewhere and they just say, sure, go ahead. And the next thing you know, you've got this group of kids just going around the campground and maybe because they're unsupervised, they start to get into things they really shouldn't get into. So that's not a good situation. If you have kids, make sure someone who is an adult that you can trust is watching out for them wherever they go. Our next point of etiquette is when you're driving through a campground, be careful, drive slowly. Now, I know almost all campgrounds have the speed posted and some of them are down to five miles per hour, right? And that can be a little bit irritating because you're used to traveling more, more quickly while you're on the road. But when you're in a campground, understand that we have a lot of kids in the campground. We'll have dogs. We will have older folks who don't hear as well. So if you're driving quickly through the campground, well, then there's a good chance that accidents can happen quickly and things that nobody wants to take place. So be careful, slow down, and follow the posted speed limits in campgrounds. Our next point of etiquette is don't consider that the campground is your personal territory and you can go wherever you want. Instead, consider that every campsite is somebody's property. So don't wander through campsites. Very important point. Sometimes you could have a campsite that is in an area where it's easier to go through your campsite to another part of the campground than to go all the way around by the road. And you might find people shortcutting right through your campsite. Well, how do you feel about that? Most people are not uh, too happy about people cutting through their campsite. And so if you wouldn't want someone doing that to you, then obviously you shouldn't do that to someone else. And that's one of the bigger complaints that people have about RV campgrounds. So be careful in that area. Now the next point of etiquette is with regard to dump stations. And this really kind of comes into play usually around state parks and things like that where there may not be any sewer connections. You know, you have your water and electric, but not your sewer connection. Well, when you're getting ready to leave, there's usually a dump station provided so that you can empty your tanks before you go home. Very convenient. Unfortunately, there are those who get in line for the dump station and they take their time. It takes forever for them just to get out to begin with. And when they do, they're on a Sunday picnic while they go around and get this thing out and that hose ready. And maybe even while they're there, they rinse their black tank. You know, not just dump it, but then rinse it thoroughly. Well, my friends, that is not what the dump station is for. What you want to do is when you pull up, get right out, get hooked up, dump those tanks, 
un, un, you know, disconnect everything, put it away, and drive off. It is not time then to rinse your tanks. That is showing very little regard for those behind you. So be aware of others that and their time and use the dump station quickly. Now our next point of etiquette here is to empty your waste tanks as inconspicuously as you possibly can. What do I mean by that? Well, most RV waste tanks and the, the handles for them are on the driver's side of an RV. Most awnings and places to enjoy the RV are on the passenger side. So when you go out and you pull the handles to uh, release all the waste out of your tanks and into the sewer, well, you're going to do it on the side of your next door neighbor where they could be enjoying their campsite. So, for instance, you'd never want to do that while someone is having lunch or eating a meal next door. Because when you dump those tanks, we all know that there's a kind of an obnoxious smell that comes, that goes with that, and it stays for a little while. Not forever, but it does have a lingering effect. Well, do you you really want someone else to be subjected to that. See, that's not good manners. So if your next door neighbor is enjoying their time outside, try to find a time to dump your tanks when it won't interfere with that. Our next point of etiquette is if you're in a campground and you have a small camper and you have a choice of campsites, please don't choose a site that could take care of a larger rig. And I this is one of my issues as well because I have a bigger rig. And for those of us with class A motorhomes and big fifth wheels and things like that, and even long travel trailers, it really is disappointing when we go by sites that could have accommodated our rig and instead there's a teardrop a little travel trailer in there or a small 20 footer or something like that. And then we have to go cram our RV into a site that's really not made for it. So I understand that you can't always control this because it really all depends on how people come in and out of campgrounds as to what is available. But if it is within your power and you have one of those smaller rigs, try not to take up one of the sites, the campsites, that are best left for larger rigs. That shows manners. Okay, those are the points I wanted to share about campgrounds. Now let's talk a little bit about boondocking. And first let me say that pretty much everything I talked about with regard to campgrounds, most of it will apply to boondocking too, but I do want to share a few extra points on that. Number one, Leave plenty of space between you and any other rig when you go boondocking. That's why they're boondocking, usually, is because they don't want to be in a campground. They don't want to be really close up to someone else. So if you come into a boondocking area that can accommodate uh, several rigs, then try to find one that's really kind of far away from the ones that are there. And that way you don't uh, really impinge on them and their area and make them feel uncomfortable. Don't get too close, in other words. That's the point I'm trying to make. Now, the next point of etiquette on boondocking, and let me emphasize this very much, whatever you bring into that site, bring out of that site. Whatever it is. Why am I being so... Uh, why am I making this an issue, let's say? Well, because this has become a major problem across the country. There are several really nice boondocking spots that none of us are going to be able to enjoy anymore. And you know why? Because people were leaving things behind. Trash and other things that should never have been left and it just grew and grew, and it made the whole area unsightly. There's nobody that was able to pick up after it. And so they just decided to 
shut the whole site down. Well, that's unfortunate. So here's the rule for boondocking. Whatever you bring into that site, bring out of that site. And that will avoid all of these problems. Our last point on boondocking is that if you're going to stay overnight somewhere, and I'm talking about Walmarts and Cracker Barrels and things like that, recognize that those are businesses. It's not a campground. So keep a low profile. You know, it's not time to put your chairs out and, uh, you know, have your grill and your mats down and all these kinds of things. Keep a low profile. In fact, don't even use levelers that could create problems on the pavement, you know, mar them in any way. You're just there for the night. So make it very low profile when you're staying there. And if you do, that makes the owners of the business feel good about having RVers there and it won't create any problems for future RVers. All right, well, those are all the points of etiquette and manners that I wanted to share about campgrounds and boondocking. But now here's an important point. What if someone is showing not so good manners around you? What if they're doing things that are irritating? Well, how do you handle that? You know, my personal opinion is if it is something small, you know, not a really major problem, then why not try to be less picky about it? You know, not so prickly. There's two qualities that really go a long way in this matter, and that is patience and kindness. And so if it's not a major problem, then why not just sort of put up with it and deal with it? And it helps you kind of deal with life in general, because the more that you go on in life, the more you realize that nothing is totally fair in life. Don't expect everything to be totally fair. And so if your next door neighbor is not being really fair about the way they're treating you uh, in some way, if it's not major, maybe the best thing is just to be patient and show a little bit of kindness in that area. However, suppose it's a bigger problem. It's something that really sh needs attention. Well, first of all, I would recommend speaking to the staff, the campground staff first. Let them have the opportunity to deal with it first. Very often, they have the expertise in this area, they know what to do, and they can deal with it in the best way. But let's suppose that even after those efforts, well, it's still going on. What do you do then? I encourage, rather than confronting your fellow camper in an angry and accusatory way, if you need to bring it up to them, try to be as respectful of them as you possibly can, and as kind as you can. Very often, the situation is that they're just not aware of what they should be doing in the matter. So if you approach them in a respectful and empathetic way, then very often you'll get very good results for that. So try to follow those guidelines in dealing with fellow RVers that are not showing good manners. Now, I hope that what I've gone over here today has been beneficial for you. Let me give you a little insight. It's actually been beneficial for me because all of us, no matter who we are as RVers, sometimes we sort of forget a little bit about what we should be doing and don't realize that some of the things we do might be affecting others, and we need reminders, as I said earlier. And so even making this podcast has been beneficial for me to remind me of some things I even need to improve on. So we all need to work on some of these matters and just look at it that way. The more that we show respect for others, the more that we show respect and care for the beautiful land that we camp on, then the more we will all enjoy our being now and on into the future. Well, that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. 
Until next time.